now turn to that part of the indictment which charges that the general staff and high command group had a major responsibility for the war crimes and crimes against humanity involved in the execution of the common plan or conspiracy set forth in counts three and four of the indictment. For purposes of brevity, I shall refer to these crimes simply as war crimes. Now, in this part of the case, I propose to show that members of the General Staff and High Command Group, including the defendants who are members of the group, ordered and directed the commission of war crimes and thereby participated in the commission of war crimes in their official capacities as members of the group. We will show that many crimes committed by the SS and the SD were committed with the knowledge and necessary support of the general staff and high command group. <coughs> Which I, will, which I will take up, relates to the killing in violation of international law and the rules of war, paratroopers, and the order begins with a recital that Allied commandos were using methods of warfare alleged to be outside the scope of the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> and thereafter proceeds to specify the methods of warfare which German troops should use against Allied commandos and the disposition which should be made of captured commandos. <laughs> this order is one of the two basic documents in the story I'll read it in full. <coughs> From captured orders, it is divulged that they are directed not only to shackle prisoners, but also to kill defenseless prisoners on the spot at the moment in which they believe that the latter as prisoners represent a burden in the further pursuit of their purposes or could otherwise be a hindrance. Finally, orders have been found in which the killing of prisoners has been demanded in principle. Two, for this reason, it was already announced in an addendum to the Armed Forces Report of 7 October 1942 that in the future, Germany, in the face of these sabotage troops of the British and their accomplices, will resort to the same procedure. If they are, to all appearances, soldiers in uniform or demolition troops, whether armed or unarmed, in battle or in flight, are to be slaughtered to the last man. It does not make any difference whether they are landed from ships and airplanes for their actions or whether they are dropped by parachute. Even if these individuals, when found, should apparently be prepared to give themselves up, no pardon is to be granted to them on principle. In each individual case, full information is to be sent to the OKW for publication in the report of the military forces. 
If individual members of such commandos, such as agents, saboteurs, etc., fall into the hands of the military forces by some other means, through the police in occupied territories, for instance, they are to be handed over immediately to the Sicherheitsdienst. Any imprisonment under military guard, in prisoner of war stockades, for instance, and so forth, is strictly prohibited, even if this is only intended for a short time. It's the end of the quotation. Signed Adolf Hitler, <coughs> and the tribunal will note that this order was issued by OKW in 12 copies. And the distribution shown on the second page included the three supreme commands, <coughs> Army, Sea, and Air, <coughs> and the principal field commands. Now, the same day, Hitler issued a supplementary order. That is document 503 PS, 503 PS, which will be US 542. And this was issued for the purpose of explaining the reasons <coughs> why the basic order was issued. <coughs> In this explanation, Hitler gave a rather different set of reasons for the issuance of the order, and pointed out that Allied commando operations had been extraordinarily successful in the destruction of rear communications, intimidating laborers, and in destroying important war plants in occupied areas. <coughs> this is the other basic document. And while I need not read it in full, I would like to read substantial excerpts. Starting with the first paragraph at the top of the page, added to the decree concerning the destruction of terror and sabotage troops, and then a parenthesis with the cross reference to the order which I have just read, a supplementary order of the Fuhrer is enclosed. <coughs> This order is intended for commanders only and must not, under any circumstances, fall into enemy hands. <coughs> the further distribution is to be limited accordingly by the receiving bureaus. The bureaus named in the distribution list are held responsible for the return and destruction.